We just finished our Japanese vacation and before we publish the vlogs we have decided to create this video about how to travel in Japan. Yes, there are tons of videos on YouTube, but I was surprised how little practical information they provide. To get views, these are focusing unnecessarily on the legend of culture shock. Japan is one of the most amazing and most tourist friendly destinations. One of the most fulfilling experiences is the only in Japan, but with some preparation the Japanese immersion may be one of the best lifetime memories. You can take one of the guided tours, but there is no comparison to the feeling of being on your own. Being lost in translation it's possible, but with a smartphone you can solve it all. Culture Sampling Japan has a unique culture. Fortunately, it is one of the most popular subjects on YouTube and lots of content creators have millions of views. The best is to start with channels created by expats that currently live in Japan. This will give you an in-depth perspective. However, these channels are missing sometimes the practical tourist angles. For example, the channel Life Where I'm From is very interesting about the day-to-day -day life in Japan, but gives little information about travel. However, you will get familiar with what onsen, izakaya or ryokan are. Another channel called Only in Japan has a lot more practical information about train travel. Currently Hana channel does offer a more artistic depiction of places of interest, which you may consider as destination in your planning phase, but not the how to get there. While a little bit dry, the japanguide.com is the best source of information and how to, especially if you are a first time traveler to Japan. Everything checked 100% and covered well essential topics. You will find all these links in the description below. Train travel. In Japan, the most popular method of transportation is the train. The railroad network is probably one of the most comprehensive in the world, but also one of the most heterogeneous, and it may be confusing at times. In addition to JR, you will travel in a dozen other smaller local lines, owned and operated by different companies. If you plan to visit multiple cities, and you take more than three trips over 300 kilometers, the JR Pass becomes cost-effective. Using Google Maps, you can calculate the cost for each trip and determine if JR Pass is giving you monetary advantage. Please keep in mind that the JR Pass is for foreign tourists only and needs to be ordered outside Japan before you start your trip. You receive a voucher by mail, we need to be redeemed at the first JR office at the airport or large railway stations. At Haneda Airport, the JR office closes at 8 p.m. sharp. JR Pass gives you also a convenience advantage. No need to line up for tickets. Just show it to the gate attendant when you enter and exit the JR zone. It also covers Shinkansen, except the express called Nozomi. The old stations called Kodama and the more rapid called Hikari are included. The Shinkansen zone is an enclave of JR zone, so you show your JR pass four times from when you start and when you finish your journey. In the description below, I have a few recommended videos about how to travel by Shinkansen. Subway travel. Tokyo has no less than six different subterranean rail transportation companies and the fare is paid by the distance. Don't even think about calculating the fare and buy individual paper tickets. Simply buy an IC card and just tap it in and out. The gate display will flash you the fare and the balance remaining on your card. 
If you exceed your IC car balance while still trapped inside the gates, there are fair adjustment machines on your side to reload your IC card. This take cash only. When exit, take a moment and match your ground destination with an exit number using the yellow panels. Also, if you have luggage, locate the elevators as you are not allowed with luggage on the escalators. Most of the trains have large displays, constantly switching between Japanese and English. The announcements are also in Japanese and English. Bus travel. I have not used bus in Tokyo, but it was absolutely essential in smaller cities like Kyoto. The Suica IC worked perfectly. You board the bus through the middle door and exit through the front door. However, the tourist buses like number 100 in Kyoto may work in reverse. You will figure it out. IC card. There are many IC cards. In Tokyo, the most popular are Suica and Pasmo. We purchased before we left a Suica card and it was proven to work for transit systems in cities 600 kilometers far from Tokyo. The IC cards work also for most vending machines and even in some convenience stores, however, mostly in the original city. For example, a Suica works for transit in Kyoto, but less accepted in vending machines. This is Koka IC card territory. An IC card has 500 yen deposit which can be refunded at the airport when you leave Japan. However, it will be a 220 yen refund fee. Mobile data. You shouldn't step outside your hotel without your smartphone. English is scarcely spoken, streets have no name, you get lost before you know it. Google Maps is more important for you than Google Translate. But you do not have to get into bankruptcy using roaming. You have two options. First is to buy a SIM card, data only, which is quite cheap and you can stay online. But there are a few disadvantages. First of all, you need to own a phone that is unlocked. Secondly, the Japanese SIM will not allow you to share a Wi-Fi hotspot with your family's other phones. In such cases, you can rent a super popular pocket Wi-Fi device right from the airport which gives you unlimited data for up to 10 Wi-Fi connections at a speed of 80 megabits per second. This may cost you around $10 a day. With this device, four persons can watch Netflix concurrently. But it is an extra device to be charged every night. And you have to return it, which may come at the most inconvenient moment at the end of your trip. Do not minimize the importance of data connection. While free Wi-Fi is omnipresent, even from vending machines, you may not find easily the exit out of Shinjuku Park without Google Maps. Seriously. Last but not least, bring an external battery and a cable. The constant usage of your smartphone may drain it faster than you expected. Also in Japan, power outlets may look like the one in the US, but half of the country has only 50 Hz and maybe only 100 volts so charging your phone may take as long as charging a Tesla from a regular outlet. No kidding. Google Translate. You can use quite successfully Google Translate. Take a photo, mark the text, and translation will come up. It is far from perfect, but works in more than 50% of the cases. A supplemental plugin may give you a real-time picture with Japanese being replaced by English, like in virtual reality, but it works quite intermittently. A few tips. Japan is extremely tourist-friendly. It is sufficient to stare for 30 seconds to a schedule board or look puzzled and someone will try to help you. They may not speak much English, but they will do whatever it takes to resolve your problem. In any train station, there are information desks where clerks speak English and will provide guidance and maps. 
In general, you walk on the left, paying attention to avoid bike lanes. It doesn't mean bicycles will play by the rules. However, uh, in Osaka, you walk on the right, despite signs indicating the left. When boarding a bus or a train, always line up as the signs indicate on the pavement. Also, a pink sign may indicate women-only car. Even the Shinkansen stops in one inch from the designated position, so just follow the people in front of you. Smoking is prohibited in the streets, but not in the large majority of restaurants. Restaurants may not be located at ground level. Look into basements or the higher floors or office buildings or department stores, even on weekends or late at night. Many restaurants have only a few tables or just a few chairs. No tip is required. If you are on the budget, you may consider convenience stores like 7-Eleven or Lawson, which are extremely frequent, have sufficient variety of pre-packed food at reasonable prices, and most accept credit cards. Yeah, I said convenience store. And now we invite you to stay tuned for our upcoming videos. Thank you.